Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about a mental model shift that I, you know, somewhat recently learned of that helped me better understand how Git works under the hood and explain a lot of behaviors that I sort of knew intuitively but didn't have a good explanation for. Um, which is that Git is not actually a series of patches, even though a lot of the commands represent Git to you that way, but it's actually more of a series of snapshots uh, and entire repository contents at points in time. And uh, let's jump into and explain that. So also a, a bit of a shameless plug for this repo, which is actually just a more searchable way for people to find videos in this playlist. This is actually sort of a rehash of some content that I've done before. Uh, this video where I talk about why Git is just a key value store. We're gonna cover a lot of the same concepts that are in this video, but framed in a different way. In a lot of ways, the video that at the time of recording was last week's video uh, also explains some of the you know, behaviors in this video. So if you wanna check out those two, I would recommend it. Um, they're gonna also you know, further <laughs> reinforce the knowledge I'm gonna show you today. Okay, um, so I'm gonna try and explain to you how you go from having a Git repo, which is just a repo and eventually get to explaining the entire contents of the repo at points in time, as well as sort of showing you some commands and Git log and stuff. And hopefully that all clicks together. Um, but we are going to start by cloning a repo. Uh, this is the one that I often use when explaining things and we'll just sort of go into that. Now, a bunch of stuff actually happened here. We're not gonna explain every part of it, uh, but I am going to sort of explain like how we ended up with files checked out here. This is a non-bare repository, and so it has the contents of the particular commit we're at, um, how we ended up on a named branch, and how uh, that, that named branch has this particular commit, and how git eventually got to that. And for me, the way that I like to think about this is by using the git ls remote command. Um, passing no arguments is going to show you the current remote, I believe, if there's only one. Uh, or probably just defaults to origin, unclear. Uh, but this is gonna represent all of the reachable heads inside of a repo, which isn't entirely true, but eh, close enough. Uh, so for instance, every tag that's in this repository. So we'll also talk about tags. Uh, GitHub also adds heads for every pull request. Um, and if you had an open pull request, there's also usually a slash merge version of it, which shows the the eventual merge of what a um, pull request would look like. This is how CI systems can test after the merge would have occurred. Um, there's also this special thing called head, capital H-E-A-D, the default branch. You can also use uh, LS Remote with symbolic refs to figure out what is the default head. In this case, we're just going to skip ahead intuitively because we know it's main. Um, and main has this uh, SHA-1 here. And that's actually the first piece of our puzzle and where we're going to start digging into the parts of Git that explain uh, how everything is hooked up together. We're gonna take the SHA-1 and we're gonna be using a command from one of those other videos and we're gonna show it a lot in this, which is git cat file. And git cat file, there's several formats of it, but we're gonna use the one that takes two arguments. One is the type and the other is the SHA-1 of that object. And it's just gonna show us what that commit is. Now, unfortunately, I picked one that doesn't fit on one screen, but let's actually explain all the parts here. Uh, and I'll also show you how we actually get back to this original uh, SHA-1, because it is actually a checksum of this object and a little bit more data as well. Uh, if we look at this, we see at the very end the commit message. This you know, can be any number of characters, so it may be very, very long, and so they put it at the end. It also can contain any contents, and so uh, I think this is sort of cleverly split apart by a double new line delimiter, if I remember correctly. Uh, we also have a GPG signature on this commit. This is because I clicked the button in GitHub and the committer, GitHub, signed this particular commit. And so this is that signature. Uh, this is of the GPG key of, of GitHub itself, or at least one that represents this particular committer. Uh, you can see the author of this, the person who opened the pull request, I believe, or at least wrote the commits of it. I don't know which one it is, but my guess is the person who opened the PR. Uh, actually, no, that wouldn't make sense because I don't think GitHub would show this email address. So it's probably it's probably the commits or the last commit of the pull request. Uh, then it shows the parents of the commits. We'll actually get back into this in a bit. This was a merge commit, so it has multiple parents because it merged two parents into one. And then finally, we have this tree. And I, I think this is actually the most important part of kind of explaining that Git is a series of snapshots. This is a 
the ID of the snapshot at this particular commit. And we'll we'll dive more into that in a bit. Um, I guess let's start with how do we get this shell in the first place, since I, I think that's interesting. And actually, I got it wrong when I recorded the first version of this video. So I'm going to show you the new version of this video. Um, and it's not just this contents here. It's actually a little bit more data as well, which is the type of the object and the size. And so if we take this particular blob here, we ask how big it is by doing wc-c for, I think it's actually dash d is probably the better one, but number of characters, uh, 1188. And there's a little header on the top of this. So if we do echo commit 1188 and then a null byte, e being expand this here and being don't put a new line at the end. Obviously, I could have used printf, but I don't tend to use printf. So, um, and then we do SHA1 sum, and we should get back this same SHA1 that we had input, and we do. Um, so this is kind of how GitHub create, or GitHub, how Git, not GitHub. <laughs> Importantly, they are very different things. Um, how Git um, computes the SHA1 of that commit, and so it's sort of, you know, uh, content addressable in a way. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to show that. Uh, I guess the next part that's not exactly the contents of this video, which is like how, how our parents are presented here. And if we do git log one line first, oh, not first parent, uh, decorate for instance, and let's just look at the first 10 of those. Oh, we want graph also. So you can see the nice graphy bits of it here. Uh, so we were looking at 3e4, whatever. We were looking at this commit, and we noticed that it had two parents up here, 9a38 and c23b. And if we look at the merge of those two commits here, we have that c23be and the 9a38 here. So basically, that commit represents, it's kind of like a, a graph. I mean, it's not, not kind of a graph, it is a graph. Uh, references these other two commit objects. And actually, we can also take these and... I think we need the, eh, maybe we don't even need, I don't think we need the full. I think we can do cat file. Can we use the short shot? I don't know, we'll find out. We can, okay. So you can see like we could take that other commit and trace it back uh, and back and back and back. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to talk about the snapshots, which is this tree part here. Let's actually go to that first commit again. Um, um, just show the first. 10 lines since those are the important ones. Uh, let's go back to this tree again. And you guessed it, this SHA-1 here is also just a file inside the git store. And so we can call git cat file on it. It is a tree object. <clears throat> so we say tree and then the SHA-1. Now, unfortunately, the output of this is not very readable <clears throat> uh, because it's somewhat compressed. Um, from what I can tell, this is actually the SHA-1 of this per, one of these particular objects in here. Uh, this is a oh a t so it's a tree. No, this is how it's okay. So mode <laughs> file name hash mode file name hash and I could open this up in Python and convert it using uh, the bytes, but it turns out there's actually a pretty printer for these, so we don't have to do that. <laughs> And you'll see here, this tree object that we're looking at actually refers to another tree and then a bunch of blobs and another tree and another blob. Um, and I, I think, I bet, if we do the same thing that we did before and uh, echo dash en tree 700 null byte and this and sha1 sum. Uh, dang. Well, oh, because I did the pretty printed version. All right, we need the actual. We need the not pretty printed version. Let's do that instead. Tree and then tree four two three. I think I should be able to get back the original. Yeah, BCB. Okay. So anyway, you can just see again like the same SHA one procedure that's used for commits is also used for trees. It's used for like probably every object in in the Git store. Um, but you can see here this tree here references other trees. This dot GitHub tree as well as blobs and other trees and I. You know, recursively. So if we asked this dot GitHub tree, what what are you? What are your contents? Git cat file dash p this. Okay, the GitHub tree contains a workflows tree. You know, we can take that down one level as well. Cat file dash p this. You can see that inside that workflows tree, there's a main dot yiml, and so this is kind of 
the, the expansion out of all of the tree objects. But the root of this at the commit, it only points to that top tree. Um, I also didn't show blobs. Let's do blobs as well. Uh, this is a, a good example, the license file. We'll do git cat file blob this. And you can see there's the MIT license from when I made this repository in 2017. Um, and so that's kind of kind of what I want to show here is that a commit just references a tree. A tree references either other trees or blobs. And I probably, I think it can also mess, uh, reference other things as well. Like I don't remember quite how submodules are represented. I guess we could clone a repo and see. Uh, let's clone what's a repo that has submodules. Uh, this one I think has submodules. Oh, it's the other way around, of course. And I want the Python one, not that one. Let's see, because I believe libsass itself is a submodule. So if we do kit cat file, can you just do commit head? Oh, you can. That's clever. I like that. Um, that can't be right. <laughs> Why is the last commit pay? That doesn't sound right. Well, maybe it is. Git cat file commit this. Spell it correctly. Okay, I guess it is right. Anyway, uh, if we do get cat file dash p, how are submodules represented? Where is the part where are submodules? Oh, it's referenced as a commit? That's super weird. I guess because the git modules file? Huh, I guess you learn something every day. Um, yeah, that's interesting. What happens if we cat file this? I mean, it should be a commit, right? Uh, commit this. Bad file. What if we just say dash p? Not a valid object name. <laughs> what? Oh, because obviously this is the commit ID in that submodule. So if we get dash c libsus or git submodule update init, and I'm sure once that clones, yeah, it checked out that commit ID. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Trees can refer to commits for submodules. Uh, but anyway, all of those are just snapshots, and so when you actually look at the log of git, so if we do git log, git log, we'll do dash p so it prints patches and uh, first parent so that it ignores merge commits, and you can see like this merge commit looks like a patch here. This is actually just git diffing two different trees, two different representations of the repository and showing us the result here. And in fact, we can we can replicate the same thing by using the diff tree command. So if we do git, well, we'll just take this commit, uh, git cat file commit head, grab tree, and git cat file commit this, grab tree. Uh, yeah, so those are the two trees. If we do git diff tree this, actually you should do the older one first so that we get it in the, the positive direction. Oh, <laughs> okay, it doesn't show us in a nice uh, output here, but is there a way to make this look less dash dash pretty maybe? Nope. <laughs> Okay, so diff tree helpfully told us that this file is different, and then you could do git. Uh, so, I mean, I would I would hope it's diff blob, but I don't I don't think that's a thing. I think I just invented that. Yeah. So you would actually have to load the blobs of these and then run an additional diff on it. But essentially, that's how Git is representing that patch and that log to us. It's just finding those two trees and looking at the difference between those and then presenting it as a patch, even though Git does not actually store it as a patch. It stores it as a bunch of uh, tree snapshots. Uh, anyways, I, I you know rambled on a bit here, but I hope this sort of explains the hierarchy of how everything is really just a bunch of SHA-1 references. As, and as well, how you can generate that same SHA-1, which I did back here somewhere. Yeah. Well, not that one, but this one where it actually worked. Uh, but anyway, I hopefully found, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.